The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. It was so terribly cold, snow was falling and it was almost dark. Evening came on the last evening of the year. In the cold and gloom, a poor little girl, bareheaded and barefoot, was walking through the streets. Of course, when she had left her house, she'd had slippers on. But what could they have been? They were very big slippers, very too big for her, for they belonged to her mother. The little girl had lost them running across the road, where two carriages had rattled by terribly fast. One slipper she'd not been able to find again, and a boy had run off with the other, saying he could use it very well when he had children of his own. And so the little girl walked on her naked feet, which were quite red and blue with the cold. In an old apron, she carried several packets of matches, and she held a box of them in her hand. No one had bowed any from her all day long, and no one had given her a cent. Shivering with cold and hunger, she crept along, a picture of misery, poor little girl. The snowflakes fell on her long fire hair, which hung in pretty curls over her neck. In all the windows, lights were shining, and there was a wonderful smell of roast goose, for it was New Year's Eve. Yes, she told of that. In a corner formed by two houses, one of which projected farther out into the street than the other, she sat down and drove up her little feet under her. She was getting colder and colder, but did not dare to go home, for she had sold no matches, nor earned a single cent, and her father would surely beat her. Besides, it was cold at home, for they had nothing over them but a roof through which the wind whistled, even though the biggest cracks had been stuffed with straw and wax. Her hands were almost dead with cold. Oh, how much one little match might warm her if she could only take one from the box and rub it against the wall and warm her hands? She drew one out. Wretch! Have spread it and burned. It made a warm bright flame like a little candle as she held her hands over it, but it gave a strange light. It really seemed to the little girl as if she were sitting before a great iron stove with shining brass knobs and brass cover. How wonderful the fire burned, how comfortable it was. The youngster stretched out her feet to warm them too. Then the little flame went out. The stove vanished and she only had the remains of the bird mash in her head. She struck another match against the wall. It burned brightly and when the light fell upon the wall, it became transparent like a tin veil, and she could see through it into the room. On a table, a snow white cloth was spread, and on it stood a shining dinner service. The rescuers teamed gloriously, stuffed with apples and prunes, and what was still better, the goose jumped down from the dish and battled along the floor with a knife and fork in its breast, right over to the little girl. Then the match went out, and she could see on the thick, cold wall. She lighted another match, then she was sitting under the most beautiful Christmas tree. It was much larger and much more beautiful than the one she had seen last Christmas through the glass door at the rich merchant's home. Thousands of candles burned on the green brands, and coloured pictures like those in the print shops looked down at her. The little girl reached her, brought her hands towards them. Then the match went out. But the Christmas lights mounted higher. She saw them now as bright stars in the sky. One of them fell down, forming a long line of fire. Now someone is dying, told the little girl, for her old grandmother, the only person who had loved her and who was now there, had told her that when a star fell down, a soul went up to God. She wrapped another match against the wall. It became bright again, and in the glow, the old grandmother stood clear and shining, kind and lovely. 
happened, Mother? cried the child. Oh, thank the ear. I know you will disappear when the match is burned out. You will vanish like the swarm's toe, the wonderful roscoes, and the beautiful big Christmas tree. And she quickly struck the whole bundle of matches, for she wished to keep her grandmother with her. And the matches burned with such a glow that it became brighter than daylight. Grandmother had never been so grand and beautiful. She took the little girl in her arms, and both of them flew in brightness and joy about earth, very, very high. And up there was no need of cold, no hunger, no fear. They were with God. But in the corner, leaning against the wall, sat the little girl with red cheeks and smiling mouth. Frozen to death on the last evening of the year, the New Year's sun rose upon a little pathetic figure. The child sat there, stiff and cold, holding the matches, of which one bundle was almost burned. She wanted to warm herself. The people said, "No one imagined what beautiful things she had seen, and how happily she had gone with her old grandmother into the bright New Year."